The steps are in a specific order. A newcomer's progression is only as quick as their ability to adopt the content. We spent years in our addiction. Understanding the use of our tools is essential to sustaining a lifetime of recovery. Watching the transition of God's miracle within another is an experience you mustn't miss. I have been asked how my life is different today. After years of recovery, it's difficult to sum up in a few short minutes. One major difference comes from understanding passion. I have an intense passion for those people who have assisted me. Passion for God. I feel passion in serving others in recovery. The intent of what I talk about or what I write or speak about is motivating people towards recovery. Certainly don't believe in the slogan, if it feels good, do it. That's what got me using to begin with. Part of having passion in a realistic sense requires me to have passion for reality. Section 4, Liberation, spoke about what to expect. Heartache and suffering will continue to arise. Keeping in condition of practicing the use of these tools and constantly pursuing my reliance on God has consistently sustained me. I am personally surrounded by His grace. Sharing a few sufferings and heartaches experienced during my recovery may explain passion within reality. Divorce ended a 15-year relationship with a woman I loved. God's grace provided and sustained a life of recovery. Separation from my children was a result of that divorce. This was one of the deepest heartaches I've ever experienced. God's grace in time renewed my relationship with my daughters. It became deeper and stronger as a result. My Christian daughters have never been judgmental, quite the reverse. They're an inspiration to me in my relationship with Christ. Economy dictated living two years in a two-room apartment. It was located near drug activity, murders, plus robbery. Twice my apartment was burglarized. Much was taken, including tax documents and my birth records. My car was vandalized. Four flat tires and a broken window. This activity was drug dealers retaliating as a result of assisting crack addicts from their demise. God's grace provided recovery release for two of those friends who remain clean from crack yet today. One of those attempted a suicidal drug overdose right in my own living room. God's grace sustained her life. Twice I suffered persecution through false accusation, which caused me to be terminated from employment. First was by a Christian woman possessed by greed. Second was by a non-Christian woman possessed by greed. God's grace in the first case provided me with food from the very souls I used to feed and introduced me to more sufferers to assist. Following the second, God's grace provided new employment 
At the exact time, I had only one dollar left in my wallet. Both cases resulted in employment behind the bar. Further educational experience related to recovery surfaced as a result. A heart attack uncovered by medical insurance provided yet another jobless period. God's grace provided assistance. All medical obligations were met. Once health was restored, employment returned, but again it found me behind a bar. I suffered the heartache of the loss of my mother. At that time, being $500 behind on child support, I was required to have it caught up at the end of that year. God's grace took Mom home to be with Jesus. Her sufferings of pain and ailments were over. Yet unaware of my need, Mom mailed a $500 check to me the day before she died. She joined Christ in heaven on December 18th. Devotion to her children she bore to her last breath. That allowed my obligation of child support was met on December 19th of that year. Examples like that make it clear why God commands, Honor thy father and mother. Sufferings and heartaches will always occur throughout our lives. Days in recovery get no exception. God's grace sustains. The sober recovery years have been the most rewarding and joyous years of the 39 years since I began drinking. God will perform miracles. Open your eyes and yourself to witness them. Whether you realize it or not, you've just witnessed one. You've been listening to a book written by an author, a former pathetic drunk, one who can't even stand to read himself. What can you expect concerning moments of temptation? An old adage says, if you hang around the barber shop long enough, you'll eventually get a haircut. This adage cautions us about placing ourselves in positions of temptation. Recovery isn't a result of prohibition of substance in our world. It's a result of our toolbox of recovery. Avoiding people, places, and things is to attempt to hide. We have been freed. No hiding anymore. Our new countenance doesn't necessarily require us to avoid places provided we have legitimate reason for being there. I'm not suggesting we should continue to patronize or frequent the bars and taverns. I have friends who are still in that business. I personally know half a dozen bar owners who no longer drink, but still own and operate their own establishments. Periodically I go to see them because they are good friends. Their bartenders, servers, and patrons are always happy to see me. They all know what I drink. Coffee, ice water, cranberry juice, or soda. I'm able to continue to associate with them without temptation. They respect the person I am today. They are, support, they are a support, not a hindrance. This is also a constant resource for sufferers who decide they need to talk. God continues to provide opportunity, yet I am no longer obligated to stay for hours or days in a bar due to my addiction. If a sense of dullness occurs within me, I say my goodbyes and leave, carrying my toolbox out the door. Sometimes church fellowship friends gawk at me, if by chance they witness one of these visits. Sometimes they may even warn me about my behavior. 
Gawks can even turn into disgust when I remind them. Jesus spent time at the docks or the shores of the diver's disease, not just the temples. I am not a preacher. I am a teacher by example. One function is to walk beside those seeking a path to God's house, not to preach at people. Alertness is definitely warranted. Other obsessions and addictions can become prevalent. Caution is needed. Distinguish between sincerity and seduction concerning the opposite sex, for example. Or even the seduction of gambling to some. For me, the opposite sex is generally a gamble anyhow, it sometimes seems. Each must make determinations about what is best for us. What may be unhealthy for us. If we only had a toolbox full of tools that could decide for us. Wow, that's right, we do! Recovery education and training has now given us a journeyman's awareness. Perhaps we're even able to teach and serve others. We're like the repairman with the exposed butt crack and all. Go with enthusiasm and interaction. Allow your extreme personality to expose yourself. Find opportunities of helping others and doing the will of God. Be cheerful. Practice the alphabet of attractive people. Make yourself shine in the light of God. Sing joy to the world for the rest of your days. Go with toolbox of recovery firmly in hand. The Apostle Paul said, as he sat in prison, Rejoice! I say, always rejoice. True freedom is to serve one another.